Welcome. How's everybody doing today? Good morning to you all. It's nice to see you all here today. I hope your day is going well so far. Got a beautiful day out there. So Sarah asked the questions. Who's got their favorite nickname they were growing up uh, or what it is today? Anybody? Wife? Gummy Bearshin. Gummy Bearshin? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we've all had nicknames uh, uh, growing up and, and stuff like that. Um, when I was growing up, my, one of mine was most common was Hot Rod. Um, and then younger, uh, they called me Rappin' Rodney. I don't think, I'm not a rapper, but it just seemed to kind of flow. Uh, <laughs> because my last name's Taylor, used to call me T-Bone. Uh, that was one. Um, as the, the leadership team here, um, we have our own messenger thread that we talk on, and we all... Tim and them gave us all like nicknames. So Tim is a uh, boss man. Um, I'm Ace, because Ace Freely from Kiss, because I play guitar. Um, Tommy is uh, Big Daddy. Uh, JC is, of course, Nancy. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and soon to be um, is uh, um, Sean, soon to be older. So his, I'm officially saying it here today. His name is now, his nickname is Blackbeard. So that's his new nickname. And, um, and one of the ones that JC uh, just gave me is kind of my new favorite. It's, they call me the Rod Father. So I kind of like that one. And I am Italian, so don't get on my bad side, all right? Um, but my all-time favorite one I gave to, uh, you guys remember Doug Rendell? He was the associate pastor here. And um, his name was uh, Elder Elder, because he was the oldest, obviously. But... Uh, I coined a new one that uh, towards the end, uh, after he left, uh, was Dougie Snuggles. So that was, that was one of my favorites. <laughs> so welcome to those who, uh, again, uh, those who are tuning in online, good to see you. Um, if you're not here uh, watching online today or here, uh, you, you're missing out because I saved the best for last. At least that's what my magic eight ball told me. Um, so I shook it again, you know, just to confirm, and it said, could you be more clueless? And I said, no. So I shook it again just to make sure, and it said for clueless, see Joe Biden. So. Sleepy Joe, sleeping on the job, can't ride his bike. Anyways, so welcome to The Point Church. My name is Rodney Taylor. Um, I'm one of the elders and pastors here at The Point. And um, me and my family have been coming here for, man, almost 20 years now. And uh, I'm married to my wife, Christine which her nicknames I call wife, she calls me husband. And uh, we've been married for uh, 27 years. And we now have uh, one um, son, Dylan, who was married to Melanie. I don't know why I'm getting choked up about that. Um, and they just had their first child, Peyton. So uh, yeah, which I wish he was here today, but uh, unfortunately he's not. So now I can add grandpa to my uh, nickname list, which is awesome. So before I get into the sermon today, let's, uh, let's pray and lift this up to God, okay? Father, thank you for today. Um, thank you for the privilege and uh, honor to, for you to speak uh, through me today, Father. May, uh, may you be lifted high, may I be lowered. May your, uh, your love for the people here and your children, Father, um, come across. Um, may your message be pure and uh, and I just thank you for uh, all that you do for us, for all these people here today coming to worship you and, and, and listen to you speak uh, through me, Father. So your will be done, not mine. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we're in this sermon series here uh, called What's the Point? So this is the last week of this series. And, um, and so I just wanted to share with you our message here at The Point. Uh, why we do what we do, give you some examples, and then uh, I'd encourage you to be sold out for God. So the title of my sermon today is Why It's Important to Go to Church. Our mission here at The Point uh, exists to welcome the unchurched to become fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ by reaching up to God, reaching in to equip the body, and then reaching out to the community. I think The Point does a great job in this over the years I've been here, and I always love to see new people and meet them and to hear their stories, and especially to see them grow in Christ, which is just awesome. For us as a church, uh, I think that's important uh, to see that and be encouraged by that and to invest in people's lives. 
That's one of the reasons, first reason why I think it's important to go to church. I'll get uh, more into that later. Um, so a little bit of backstory about myself first um, and title of this series. Uh, I grew up in the Catholic Church. Uh, I went through catechism, went through confirmation in eighth grade. So I knew a lot of the Bible stories, you know, growing up. And it all made sense to me. I believed in God. My mom and dad taught me uh, good morals growing up. You know, I thought I was a good person. I really did. You know, um, I'm not a, and, you know, in my view, I'm not like a, a rapist or a murderer, so I guess that qualifies, um, right? So church was important to me uh, growing up, but kind of not really. You know, when you're a kid, you got other things on your mind and stuff, and you got to get up early, and, and mostly went because just to please my ma. <laughs> but, you know, when you have a teenager and life's going on, you have you know, a lot going on in your body, you know, puberty, you know, changes happening in you. You like girls, uh, you like sports, you like girls. Uh, you gotta find a job to be able to take out the girls. And then before you know it, your relationship with God tends to suffer and worldly things start to get in your way. At least for me, it did. I'm sure some of you can relate to this growing up. So before you know it, you've created your own God and you pick and choose what God should be and you believe what you think is right is wrong. And that's kind of where I was coming from. But for me, I didn't think I, I needed to go to church to believe in God. My position was, uh, I can believe in God at home. Oh, I need to go to church. But when I look back at it now in my rearview mirror, I see that I was being self-centered and selfish. Uh, that was kind of my thought process before I started coming here. That's where I was coming from. You know, it's not that I didn't want to be around people or I didn't want to uh, help people or, you know, all that stuff. You know, I thought I had all the answers and, you know, it was inconvenient with my schedule. I have too many other things going on. When I, mean, I really dig deep and think down about it, I think I let pride get in the way. Um, whatever is wrong with me, I can fix it. I don't need anybody else. No problem, I thought. But my favorite one I told myself, and I can't believe I did, is God said, rest on the seventh day. So that's what I did, including God, <laughs> which is not what he meant. Anybody who knows uh, Charles Barkley, he's a former NBA legend, and uh, he's famous for calling people, you knucklehead. And uh, in my case, I was one, and a misinformed one at that. Um, sometimes you just, you know, you misread scripture, and you tend to put your own spin on it. And that's dangerous. And God said, rest on the seventh day, yes, but he's not an excuse not to praise him, or not an excuse not to worship him. And if you only went on Sundays like me, well, then you're not worshiping him or anything like that, for that matter. So the, uh, one of the founding, or the founding pastor here uh, was uh, Dennis Crowley, for those of you who remember him. Um, he taught me a phrase I'll never forget. And um, it's called the fruit on the tree principle, which Jesus talks about in the Bible. Um, and he always used to say, so when it really comes down to it, was like one of Devin, Dennis's favorite taglines. And uh, I was always trying to honor him whenever I get a chance to talk. So when it really comes down to it, only get advice from people who have fruit on the tree. Don't get, you know, you don't get marriage advice from somebody who's been divorced three times. All right? You get it for marriages that at least lasted more than a few years. How about uh, 20 years? How about 30 years? How about 50? Gosh, I'm an emotional wreck today. <laughs> so, <clears throat> can't get this out. Shout out to my mom and dad. We're celebrating their 50th anniversary this year. Love you guys. So there's a lot out there that can distract us, I believe, from a relationship with God. It's very easy to get caught up in other things in this life. There's TV 24 hours a day. Remember, for uh, those of you that are older, um, the TV broadcasting would go off air like midnight or like one in the morning or something. And then they would play the national anthem. And then there'd be like a fuzzy picture. And then we'd go like, Shh. You know, remember those days? It's like three channels. <laughs> so 
So there's not a lot of distractions, but you know, then cable came, it's 24 hours. Now you have Facebook and YouTube, video games, you know, all kinds of uh, things that distract us. You know, I could go on and on about the things, those things. But, you know, not that there's anything wrong with those uh, in general, but too much of those things can be a problem. And I think therein lies the question, why do I need to go to church? Because I said so. Huh? How about that? <laughs> it's one of my favorites. How many people heard that growing up? <laughs> uh, how many of us uh, use that now? How many of you can't wait to use that when you have kids? <laughs> so there are some great examples uh, in the New Testament of why God created the church and why Jesus uh, died for the church, I believe. In Acts 2, uh, Peter is preaching to the crowd and he's talking about Jesus. And, he is in, and he, that he is God's son and he's affirming uh, Jesus' authenticity. Peter is urging uh, people to repent of their sin and to turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of their sins. And when you do so, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So then in verse uh, 41, it says, those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day about 3,000 in all. I believe this is the way God intended it to be. How else could you, um, how else could these things happen? It definitely is not going to happen when you're sitting on the couch. The apostles went to visit all these churches and give them direction and encouragement. And he also gave them discipline to make sure they were doing things the right, uh, doing the right way and to make sure that they were uh, doing things for the right reasons and getting maximum growth. And, and number one being uh, important is giving all the glory to God. And as Christians, we should want to follow God's directions for our lives and the examples he gives us in his word in the Bible. So then in, in, in Acts 2, Peter continues um, from verse 42 to 47, and it says, All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and to fellowship and to sharing in meals and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place, we're meeting here today, and shared everything that they had. They sold their property, they sold their possessions, and they shared the money with those that in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. What a great bunch of verses that is. So let's break down some of these verses, okay? So in verse 42, he says, All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship of the breaking of bread and to prayer. So we all come here on a weekly basis, right? But back then they met every day, physically meeting and conversation with each other. And you can't do that by yourself. That's not the way God intended it. You get to hear great teaching and God's word here at the point by qualified godly people, or you slipped him a hundred bucks and you can be qualified too. <laughs> Ron and Dare. <laughs> so one of the things I love about the point is that it's not just opinionated thoughts, okay? With no scripture to back it up. It's great scripture-based teaching that we can apply to our everyday lives where it's backed by scripture and uh, we're also sharing the gospel through that, which I think is very, very important. Plus the scripture is on the screen which I also love, so you can follow along. You know, back then they were physically meeting together, like we are here today, sharing life together. Recognizing the other believers as brothers and sisters in Christ and meeting new people in Christ and sharing the gospel, which is the most important thing as Christians I think we can do. And in love, not condemnation. Okay? In love. Hear me, church not in condemnation. The most important thing that we can do as Christians is to share the news of Jesus Christ in love and in not in condemnation. We all need somebody. We all need help in life. We all need direction in life. We all need love in life. God's love being the most important. 
You know, you can make a difference in, um, in people's lives when you come to church. You really will where you can. I've, I've seen it firsthand. And you know, it can be as simple as uh, saying good morning to somebody when you guys walked in the door. How many people were greeted as they came in the door? Huh? I love that. It starts off your day right, welcome. It could be as simple as something like that. You know, we don't know what's going on in people's lives. Um, just simply saying that could have made the difference in their week. Saying that or giving them a handshake or a hug. Has anybody here had a hug from JC? You know what I'm talking about, huh? That's a good hug. That's another great reason why I believe it's important to come to church. It's not only just being welcomed by people, but pouring into people and making an impact on someone's life. Um, when Sarah Martin was up here, she shared uh, her, her message in this series, and uh, it was awesome to hear. It was very inspiring. And when she was up here talking about her life story, it was just, it was great. To hear how the church impacted her life and the lessons that she learned and the examples she was taught to then find a church and do the same thing and teach the young kids about God and to see them grow. How fulfilling and rewarding that must be to do that. Huh? I mean, pouring into these young kids. And as parents, you know what I'm talking about when you have kids. She used God's gifts that gave her to teach. And she learned, and what she learned, and passed them on to other kids. I believe God gives us spiritual gifts to be used for this reason. I believe it's important to find out what those gifts are for you and to use them to share God's love and to serve. My buddy, uh, Ron Adair, who kicked off this series, sermon series, What's the Point?, is one of the people who had a hand in, in pouring into Sarah Martin and when she was younger. How cool is that? How cool is that to see his love for God had an impact on someone's life? Praise God for that. And to witness that firsthand is awesome. You, you know, you never know the kind of impact you're going to make on someone's life until you do. And even then you never know. But I know who does know and that's God. And that's all that matters. He knows your heart. So here's another uh, reason why I believe it's important uh, to come to church. In verse 42, uh, Peter continues uh, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. So what Peter is talking about here, I believe, is sharing the Lord's Supper, which we uh, refer to here as communion. So which of those, uh, or for, for those of you who don't uh, know, we practice communion here uh, every week at the point, and we honor and remember the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross. So our sins could be forgiven, which was modeled for us at the Last Supper, before Jesus' death, when he was talking with all his disciples. And to do that as family of believers is important. I've, I've been privileged to give a communion message uh, here uh, every month for years and uh, to help us remind us, and it never gets old, to remind us of the sacrifices Jesus made for us on the cross. We always need to be reminded of that, of how much God loves us. That's another great reason. Another great reason why I believe it's important to come to church is prayer. I can't tell you how much prayer is important, church. We pray all the time at the point here for you, if you didn't know that. The staff, the leadership team, we are always praying for you. We are communing with the one true God, and I believe God hears the prayers of his people. We even have a prayer table set up in the back over here. If you ever need prayer for anything, somebody will be there to pray with you. You can send prayers, uh, requests online, our website. You know, it's easy. There's just something special about being prayed for right here. You know what I mean? Hands on, in person. There's just something extra that happens. I, I can't explain it. I believe it's the Holy Spirit. But just not only receiving those prayers, but being the one to pray for them. It's just a great honor. I've had the privilege to do that, to go to hospitals to go to people's homes, bring them communion, uh, pray for them and their family. Um, it truly is a blessing to do that. And we can all take that, that honor on and, and continue to do that with people in our lives. That's why it's important to be here so you know those things are happening. 
One thing I found um, in my personal life is that when my relationship with God is not great, I believe it's because of lack of prayer. I believe that's the biggest hindrance in our relationship with God is lack of prayer. So if you don't believe me, try it. And I, I guarantee you, you won't be disappointed. Talking with the one true God, the creator of everything. So Peter continues here in verse 45. As I explain these verses, and they said they sold their property and possessions to give anyone who had need. This one is important also. There's a need for here uh, in Zion, in the harbor where people need food. You know, as Sarah mentioned, so we give our tithes and our offerings, we create a food pantry. God blessed us with that. We feed hundreds of families in these areas. And uh, lately there is a food uh, shortage just because of COVID, so please be in prayer about that that uh, we were able to get more food and more people would uh, give to the food pantry so we can continue to help uh, the people in the, that are uh, starving in these areas. Um, you know, the point is if uh, people even lost their jobs, maybe need help you know, paying a water bill here and there or an electric bill or, or whatever somebody's need that's, that, that is in need, the church is here for that and we've helped them. God commands us to help those in need. If you didn't come to church, how else would you know this? You know, be informed, church. Take that extra step in growing God's family. It's important to God. It should be important to you. Let me say that again. If it's important to God, it should be important to you. Peter continues in verse 46. Um, and they worship together. How great is our worship here, church, huh? God in this building. It's awesome. To see people's hands raised and praising God is great. For me, that's what drew me here to this church. That was the one thing. I was blown away about on the worship here. It sounded like a rock show. I said to myself, this is awesome. I said at the same time, is this legal? I've never, I didn't know this thing, this stuff like this existed, existed. As I mentioned earlier, I grew up in the Catholic church where they had, you know, usually an older lady playing the piano and, and singing hymns. And that's just not my vibe. But man, when I came here, I, I was just drawn to it. So praise God that worship is here legal at the point. <laughs> you know, God used the talents that he gave me. Uh, he blessed me with to help you lead all in worship for the past 20 years. It's been an honor and a privilege to do so. Hopefully it will inspire other people to do that also. We could use some help up here. We always need people. Find out what your gifts are, church, and use them for God. Again, there is something special when you're in a building with other people worshiping God. It's not the same as listening to it on a laptop or watching it on TV or listening through your stereo in your car. You need to experience it live, live and loud. We could always use more people on the stage to create that atmosphere. And back in uh, verse uh, 41, Peter said, um, I'm going to read to you. Those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church about 3,000 in all. Then going back down to where Peter ended in verse 47 here, he said, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their group those who were being saved. That's another great reason why it's important to come to church. People, it's baptisms. Huh? How many people have been baptized? We've been baptized here. Huh? That's great. I love to see all those hands. That, I can't tell you how awesome it is besides worshiping here, but to see baptisms live, live in person, and seeing people giving their lives to Christ, it is so inspiring to see broken, sinful people like you and I the need for Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and accept Jesus into their lives. It is awesome. And we are all sinners, people. Just ask your family and they will tell you. <laughs> I will never forget <laughs> when Tim set up a pool here in the auditorium. And I'm not talking no little kiddie pool. It was about a 20 by 20 foot pool, about three foot deep. It took like this whole area over. The carpet was soaked after it was all finished and said and done. I think there was like 82 people that were baptized that day. 82, huh? 
I was playing on stage that day, and I just felt the Holy Spirit come over me, and I did like a back flop in the water, and, uh, and it, it, it was awesome. Water went everywhere. <laughs> and, you know, I was, I was baptized years ago, but I believe sometimes you just need that reminder of who I was in Christ. Do I serve Christ or do I serve this world? Do I follow what the world shows me or do I follow what, or, or do I follow what Christ says or Jesus says in his word? And, and sometimes I think we just need, need to be reminded of that, and, and that was me that day. So who do you choose, church? Who do you choose? Do you choose this world, or do you choose Christ? That's a question we will all have to answer when we die. Will Jesus say, well done, my good and faithful servant? Or will Jesus say, depart from me, I never knew you? I know that's hard to hear, but listen, um, it's true. Only God knows the answer to that question. All we can do as Christians is to share the gospel with love. If um, It's up to you to open that free gift that God offers us. The baptism is over here in the corner. It's ready over there on the stage. The water's warm. For those of you who haven't taken that step, today would be a great day for that. Take a minute to think about it. Go over to the prayer table and someone uh, will be with you uh, to bring you up here if, that, if you so choose. And the change for the better will begin, I promise. You will never forget it. You will be changed for the better forever. I guarantee it. I was. I know many people in this room have been. So if you're thinking about that and that's on your mind, come talk to someone in the back and let them know. So what are my, my steps, point, or point peeps we can take to show people the importance of coming to church I think it's very simple invite them it's not super hard you get invited to stuff all the time right you don't have to be a biblical scholar to invite them or to have been a seasoned Christian for years just invite them uh, you got you invite people to dinner all the time right I just invited to dinner um, you invite people to go see a movie right you invite people to church they get a dinner and a movie it's a win-win. So one of the most popular reasons uh, people give why they come to the Point Church and serve and all the great ministers that we have, ministries we have here at the Point um, is because someone invited them or asked them. That's all it takes. Just ask someone, church. Invite them to come and see the life change that happens and invest in people's lives, church. Grow God's kingdom like never before. Well, Matt talked last Sunday, he talked about being kingdom-minded. Be kingdom-minded. Grow the church, grow God's kingdom. We're commanded to do so. And this leads me to uh, Matthew 28, verse 19. Jesus is telling us, not asking us, he is telling us, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Jesus didn't say stay, he said go. Jesus didn't say stay, he said go. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Thank you, church, for letting me speak to you today in love. But more importantly, God loves you. Don't ever forget that. Get to know him before it's too late. And lastly, the number one reason why it's important to go to church is because God said so. Let's worship God.